next brother right here, no stranger to hip hop, yeah. to the hip hop community. Stay in here while you talk to oh, me. Okay, man. okay, okay. One of my good brothers right here who's been putting in serious work in hip hop for how long? For a while, bro. For a while. <laughs> hey, you talking about 50 years of hip hop? Yeah. You definitely got to include this man in the mix. Coming up out of the sit, as they say. All the time. Straight out of Mississippi, you know what I'm saying? We got Dave Vanders building. What, what brings you here today, comrade? Why are you here today? Man, just to support the people and the family. <laughs> Solidarity that we have to show, especially during these times. A lot of people won't admit it, man. It's something in the air. That's right. I can't explain, man. I I never felt this way spiritually. I never felt this way physically. And we have to find a way to take care of each other. One thing that I can I, I can honestly say is that the time is coming when we're going to have to support each other, whether we like it or not. And um, you know. I just have to show up personally, by myself, front and center, and just be here you know, to support the family and to support the people who made the sacrifices, man. Uh, you know, Shaka and his family, Aisha, and just... I remember one day, man, I was I was on tour with Luda, and I remember Shaka telling me, he was like, man, I know what you believe in, and I know your heart. He said, but you have no idea what it means to grow up as a child, you know, under certain environments. So Shaka and I, he should tell me all of these stories, man. And, you know, while other people were partying, man, they would just sit down and give me and I don't know if Shaka knows how much that meant to me because it, it put a certain fire and it gave me a certain perspective. And it's crazy. My mother told me. My mother said it's a difference between choosing something and growing up in it, and growing up into something. And so she's from Mississippi as well. Yeah. That's a that's a place. That's a that's a different type of yeah. where we from it's it's to a certain degree, you're revolutionary by default, wasn't you? Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Shout out to Louisville and Stockton, all the places out there where they do that work. Chuck Wendell Moore and his whole family. Yeah. You know, we were personal friends. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of things that we're going through. So, you know, just for me, it's just about showing up, man, and making sure that people know that there's solidarity in places where people have never had. Yeah. And we appreciate uh, you coming out, not just represents hip hop. One thing I appreciate about you is, you know, you came from, you came within a certain vein when you first stepped into the scene, but once you got that information, you transformed. Nah. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the so, information was always there. It was always there. <laughs> it's just that what people don't understand about consciousness, like, bro, Anthony Broder, who wrote the Broder file, I became conscious in the 11th grade. It just didn't make sense to me. Like, a lot of these kids are way more so-called woke, what people would say, what people would ever know. But if you hungry and you can't eat, and you don't see how you can tie that together in real life, it don't matter. It's just information until you can bring it into real life or into action. So me, I been conscious since the 11th grade. But when you come from one of the most violent cities in the United States that don't have the outlets that other states have. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how to put that together. So for me, you know, the consciousness of been And what I tell people is the other side is still there too. You know, I'm glad you pointed that out because when you talk about Mississippi, a lot of organized in Mississippi. You know what I mean? There ain't too many places like Washington. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about prison, when you talk about actual slavery, you know what I'm saying? When you talk about some of those dirt roads out there, when you talk about the gulf and all of that, that stuff, that's a whole different type of problem. You know what I'm saying? When you have these white folks that still to the day trying to box out <laughs> Africans, like you said, you can't eat the book. And we have to be able to reach people, you know. You have to reach people, you have to reach people where yeah. they are. And if people don't understand yeah. that. You can at least empathize with what they go to. I remember I told a Mississippi historian one time. I walked up to him and I asked him, I said, do you know who David Banner is? And he was like, 
like, no. I said, how can you expect these kids to, or anybody to respect the history that you want them to learn if you don't know them? You know, so I'm just, I'm just grateful that the general public allowed me to grow up. Because most of the artists who chose the path that I chose, people would have just let them pass. People allowed me to keep it. You know, I, I want to say this while I'm here. I like to thank, you know, Atlanta. I like to thank Chicago. I like to thank LA. I like to thank the Bay. I like to thank Houston and the rest of Texas. Washington, D.C. You know, they allowed me, and more than anything, you know, and the reason why I say this, the city of Atlanta knew that I was from Mississippi. They allowed me, you know how when most people come to most cities, they make you shed where you're from. Atlanta allowed me to stay here, allowed me to get my record deal, allowed me to get all of these things from Atlanta and rep Mississippi. Most places don't do that. And I'm so grateful for that. And so many people don't understand. I got my record deal from the work that I put in in Atlanta, and then it allowed me to move home. I moved back home after getting that big record deal, and Atlanta allowed me to use their steam in order to represent my state. And I just like to say thank you. Okay, okay. What do we have to look forward to as far as like you with the youth? Because you always, you know, I know that, uh, you know, you ventured out and you the film, and, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know how you looking at the music scene, you still coming with it? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. What, 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 uh, God Box 2 is okay. on his way. Right right okay. Amazing. Okay. Okay. Um, but as far as what I do with the children, that's all going. On. That's something that we always have to do. Especially as men, I black boys, especially right now, me. You know, um, we got something really special that's coming up, brother. I haven't seen anybody do in recent history. Um, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, I want to allow it to come, but, you know, uh, our boys need it. I'll tell you what, man, I appreciate your work. Every time I see you consistent, and uh, I'm looking forward to hitting some of the streets in Mississippi. Because I know there's a whole lot of folks out there calling. Like I said, I ran through the little and and places like that. There's a lot of people always talking about how they can get organized and all that kind of stuff. What I tell people, man, when people ask me, you know, matter how can I get in the mood? How can I become an actor? Get out. Come again? Let's see. Stay on point. Y'all be good. We said. We have a direct right here. It was David Bear. Just talked to the attorneys of Dr. Ford. Yes, mother folks coming on board. We got uh, Dr. Akiele's mojo down there. I think he's going to get away without talking to him. He's going to come up there too in a second. We got to finish the serve on the camera. You know what I mean? And like I said, we are absolutely grateful that we have the opportunity to pay homage to one of our favorite freedom fighters. Because it's folks like Dr. Matumi Shakur who has inspired people like me. And, and I need to say that because of the fact that, you know, I'm here at Black Power Media. But I'm not here at Black Power Media because I like journalism. I'm here at Black Power Media because I'm a freedom fighter, because I'm an organizer, and because this is a tool for propaganda, and this is what's important to us. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't want nobody to get it twisted. We ain't here for no likes and all that type stuff. If you do like it, great. But if you don't like it, that's cool too. We still gonna win in spite of our size. So, so we got a few more people we're gonna interview and whatnot. So, you know, we're gonna keep it moving, put it on pause for a minute, we'll be back at you.